demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use the Belgravia corners and the Belgravia border or strip to make a beautiful card by combining the two together to give you something very intricate. And this die here has been designed with a perfect 45 degree angle on this little section here. And that means that you can achieve this where you actually get a perfectly square frame out of the piece with no worries, no concerns. You're not having to mix anything around. It really works very, very simply. So what we're going to do, we're going to get started and I'll bring all of the pieces in that I've got ready. Now I have used some of the press cut nesting dies in this. You don't have to, you can use any square die, but obviously it's been sized to match with them. So we'll move those pieces to one side. And what I've got here is, I've cut this with the nesting die, and this is six and three quarter inches, this square of white. Um, and you can easily do that using um, a nesting die or using your guillotine or paper trimmer. And what I've done then is I've cut the border four times. And you can see, you can really build patterns with the border. So you can build patterns together and get beautiful backgrounds, strips. There's a lot of different things you can do. But if you are clever with how you cut it, I cut all four of these out of this piece of card by laying it down each time. That gave me that beautiful background, which again, I could drop these pieces back into. Or I could go with an alternate colour. It'd look lovely with a white. It gives me a completely different background. But for this one, we're going to be building the frame. So the first thing I need to do is to actually spray glue or wet glue the little pieces. Um, so you can use something like the glue glaze from Craft Artist. Um, you can use sort of wet glue on them. It's a lot easier to use spray glue. And I use Craft Mount by 3M. So just make sure they're all turned on their back. I've got a tray here and give them a good spray with the glue. And what I'm going to do now is to pick up a border piece and just effectively place it in the middle. So place one piece in the middle on one edge and glue it down. Take the next piece and match it up corner to corner. And you'll see there if you've gone off at all. So you can reposition your first piece down. So you can build it really simply by simply repositioning until you've got them straight. So we'll put the next one down. There we go. You'll take the third one. And we'll put that one down. And I'll finally take the fourth one and connect up the two pieces. So we can see there. Okay. We just need to release this piece here. There we go, to get them to match. And you can see there very simply, just use our glue eraser and take some of the excess glue off here. Give it a good press down. You can see there, we've got a beautiful panel going all the way around all four sides. I then take a die, a nesting die, or you could use a knife that will fit in that. I just tape that down and I'm just going to run that through. Now to make something this large, you do need to use an A4 machine. But obviously, if you're using a knife, every piece individually is smaller, so you can easily fit them through and then just cut the hole with a knife or with your guillotine or paper trimmer if you're very clever. Um, I find that quite difficult, and that's why I love dies because they do all of the work for me. And again, if you're making this, you take a little bit more time just to get it right. So I perhaps didn't place them all on exactly right but you see how the system works. So there I've got a frame going around four corners with that beautiful pattern on. And a die that size would be very, very expensive. So doing it this way really does reduce the price because you've got far more flexibility. So I'm just going to add a little bit of foam tape 
just for depth and dimension onto the back of this frame. And I've already cut a set of nesting frames in black and white for this to fit onto. Now, because I didn't get the sizing right, it probably won't fit, but there we go, perfect. So I'm just going to take the foam tape off and then we will fit that onto the nesting frames that I've already done. There we go, fit that through. So you see now I've got that beautiful pattern and it's almost, I don't know, it's almost got a sort of a Navajo look to it. Every time I do this, I come up with a different look. So we need something to go in the center and for this, I'm going to use the corner dies. And with the corner dies, of course, you get four because nothing's more annoying than actually getting one corner die and having to cut it out four times. So you cut them all together. So what I've got here is I'm going to take a piece of black card. and I'm going to cut these in black. To do this project, I cut them once in black and once in white. And I'm just going to cut this to simple around a four and a half inch square and pop each corner into the corner, leaving a little gap and tape it down. This gives you a beautiful pattern in the center. So all three, all four corners, going, you see how much easier it is, how much difficult it would be if you just got one of these and you had to place it on each corner and then cut. So we'll take that, we'll cut, run that through our die cutting machine and cut it. And what we will get is a piece just like that with four corners that will come out of it. So there are my four corners. So I've done that in black. I've also done that in white. So I've got the four corners. So very simple. So I'm going to use the white aperture for this one. So I'm going to take a piece of the black card. I'm going to spray glue the back of my piece. And we'll just drop that on, sort of nice and central, because obviously I'm going to want to frame that and trim it out. I'm then going to take my four black corners and make sure you glue them on the reverse. It's very easy to tell which is the reverse as it's a sort of unfinished side. I'm going to take my four white corners and I'm going to spray glue all of those. So I'm going to take the white and I'm going to drop it back in to the space I cut the white from. And because all four dies are identical, you don't need to know which ones come from where. It doesn't matter, each one will fit in. But you see already you're starting to build a sort of background pattern that would be again a very complex and expensive die to produce, whereas the corners just do that for you. So again, I'm going to take my glue eraser and just take a little bit of the excess glue off the top and a few of the marks off. These are great when you're dealing with white card as they just take those little marks off. And then I'm going to take my black pieces and I'm effectively almost going to, I can match the corners there so I can match that circle and that circle. Just like that, there we go. Oops, sorry, wrong way. Let's go for this one, pop it in the right place. Oops, you've escaped. So we'll just put this little bit back in there with me while I drop this back into space. There we go. So we'll just take that, we match it to that circle and we match it there to that square. I'm going to do the same with the next corner and again match it to the square and the final one I'll match it again to that circle 
that square, that square, and we'll glue that down. And that gives us that different detailed look. Oops, doesn't help if it would help if I glued it the right way round. That was the right way. I'm going to add a little bit more glue onto the back of this. I think I've been over spraying for a while. So, I'm just simply circle square, square. There we go. And there I've got that different pattern in the middle with the pattern on the outside. I'm going to take the frame and all I've done is add a couple of layers of foam tape onto this so it's nice and sturdy and doesn't gape. So we'll take each of these off. Always the boring bit to watch. And then I can frame that centre piece. Exactly. Take my scissors and just undercut off the excess. And by that, I mean tilting the scissors to the side so that the blade slides simply through. Those pieces. Let's move all of that out. So I've still got a piece that I can use for another piece or another card or another project. And then I would put that onto a card blank. And it's simply made. Very simple, very effective, very easy to do. And there's lots of different options of the way you can do that.